Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video on the official MTG Arena channel. Today we're taking a look at another combo deck that features a new card from the Lord of the Rings expansion, Rosie Cotton of South Lane, a 3-mana 1-1 legendary halfling peasant, and when Rosie enters the battlefield we get to create a food token, and whenever we create any sort of token we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control other than Rosie. And Rosie happens to combo quite well with Scurry Oak, a 3-mana 1-2 with Evolve, and whenever one or more plus one counters are put on Scurry Oak, we may create a 1-1 green squirrel creature token. So if we have a Scurry Oak on the battlefield, play Rosie, put a plus one plus one counter on Scurry Oak, then now it gets to make a 1-1 squirrel token. The squirrel token enables Rosie, letting us put another plus one counter on one of our creatures, put it on Scurry Oak, and now we've got an infinitely large Scurry Oak and infinite 1-1 squirrel tokens, which are often enough to win the game on the spot. So that's the two card combo that we're trying to assemble, but it is certainly important to get the Scurry Oak down first and then play Rosie, because we do need that initial plus one counter to kickstart the combo. And to make sure we get there quickly, we're also playing four copies of Leyline of Abundance alongside 12 one mana elves, or I guess in the case of Pilgrim, a human monk that can tap to make white mana, a recent addition through Innistrad Remastered. And then we've got Elvish Mystic and Lanor Elves, and these can all make an additional green mana if we can start a game with a Leyline of Abundance on the battlefield. So that's another perk of playing this in Historic compared to other formats, is that we get access to this four mana enchantment that can start on the battlefield if it's in our opening hand. And then it also provides a mana sink for 8 mana to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. And that can actually be a way to kickstart our combo if we have both Scurry Oak and Rosie on the battlefield, but we happen to play Rosie first and then Scurry Oak, then now we can activate Leyline, get that initial counter on Scurry Oak to get that initial Squirrel token, which can then continue putting plus one counters on Scurry Oak thanks to Rosie's ability. And then we've got a couple ways to help assemble these combo pieces. We've got four copies of Fauna Shaman, a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two that can pay a green tap, discard a creature card to search our library for any creature card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So if we already have a few mana elves on the battlefield, we can now maybe discard them to Fauna Shaman to get either Rosie or Scurry Oak to assemble those two cards. Then we also have three copies of Skrelf, which is important to protect our combo pieces. A 1-1 one -one that can tap after we pay a white Phyrexian mana, so either two life or white mana. And then we can choose a color, so that can often name the color of the removal spell that our opponent's trying to cast. And that way we can uh, prevent that from taking out a key combo piece. Can also potentially use it if our opponent's only playing creatures of a single color. Name that color, targeting a large Scurry Oak, which can now attack unblocked. So that can also be quite useful. And then we've got more ways to assemble the combo with Eldritch Evolution, which as an additional cost requires us to sacrifice a creature. We've got plenty of one mana else we don't mind sacrificing. And then we can now find a three drop with it, since convert mana cost is equal to X plus two. So in the case of a one drop sacrifice, we can get a three drop. So that can also put a Scurry Oak or Rosie straight onto the battlefield. And then of course, four copies of Collected Company, which can potentially find both Rosie and Scurry Oak at once and assemble the combo in one fell swoop, even in the opponent's end step so we can make an infinitely large scurry oak and infinite squirrels to then kill the opponent on the following turn. And then a mana base has plenty of green-white dual lands that enter the battlefield untapped since we want to make sure that the early game plays out smoothly so we can't afford any tapped lands. So we've got brush land, razor verge thicket and temple garden as well as a green-white pathway. Then Boseju and Aiganjo offer a bit more interaction with the Boseju potentially blowing up opposing artifacts or enchantments and Aiganjo can deal 4 damage and then a couple basics in case we need to search those up as well. So I'm not playing with the new Shire legendary land since it would often come into play tapped early on when we need the untapped mana to play turn one elf, especially if we start with a Leyline of Abundance in our opening hand. Otherwise, the Shire could come into play untapped later if we control a legendary such as Rosie and Skrelf, and then later the food token could also be a way to kickstart a combo with Rosie and Skurioko on the battlefield, so that was certainly a consideration when building this deck, and it can turn out to still be correct to play one or two copies. But for now, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and it seems fine. We've got a bit of acceleration, and then collected company to try and find Scurry Oak, or we can draw one naturally. So turn one doesn't matter too much, let our elves or pilgrim. Turn two, Scurry Oak, turn three, Rosy, and we seem to be up against an elves deck, which isn't known for having any removal. So the only way we lose if our opponent goes wider faster than us, but that's also unlikely. So yeah, play Scurry Oak. Might have to take a bit of a hit next turn, but then infinite squirrels can help us 
block. So unless our opponent can give the team trample with, let's say, a Crater Hoof Behemoth, we should be alright. And even then, if we technically have enough time to make infinite squirrels, we have infinite power and toughness to block. Opponent was off to a nice start. Elvish Archdruid here, pumping the team. Opponent's already empty-handed on turn 3. But uh, yeah, we get to play Rosie. Counter on Scurry Oak. And that should be game. Can still play a Skrelv if we'd like. That way we can give Scurry Oak protection from green essentially to attack past all the elves next turn, make it easier to win the game. I recommend multitasking here and using spacebar to press continue while using the mouse to click on Scurry Oak to speed things up. And I do want to make enough squirrels to make sure we don't randomly die to a top decked uh, Crater of Behemoth. So we might be here for a second. After testing the deck, most opponents tend to concede to the combo unless they're packing sweeper effects in the deck that can reset the board, since they can usually piece together that they don't have a chance. But sometimes it can be fun to just make a lot of squirrel tokens, so I don't mind. There is a token limit on Arena, so you usually can make more than 200 tokens, but we're definitely gonna call it a day before that point. Yeah, I don't think we quite survive Craterhoof at this point, but we're getting close. Opponent has about 10 creatures with the Craterhoof. They all get plus 10 plus 10 and trample. So that's about 100 damage we have to account for coming across. And now we've got 40-ish squirrels. Of course, Scurry Oak can only block one creature. So we do need to have, I would say, around 70 squirrels to be completely safe. And our opponent also has to tap a few creatures to cast a Crater Hoof in the first place, so... And then as long as we play Skrelf, we only need Scurry Oak to win the game next turn. All the squirrels can chum block. Alright, that should be enough. And play Skrelf. And pass a turn. Could have also attacked with Scurry Oak here, forcing a chum block. Although, might be slightly safer to hang back. Again, in case of a Crater Hoof Behemoth. Just a Sentinel from the opponent gets to draw. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. None of our combo pieces, but we have both Fauna, Shaman, and Evolution to find them, and then of course Company has a decent chance of hitting one of them. Turn 1 Elves. And then turn 2, probably Fauna, Shaman. Don't want to sack my Elf on turn 2 when we don't have one of the combo pieces to guarantee a combo on turn 3, since we want to keep the Elf to potentially play Collected Company next turn. Opponents also green-white, so it could be a similar combo deck. Sanctum Weaver, so it's an enchantment deck instead. Okay, so I don't have a creature to activate Fauna Shaman, so we're just going to go for Collected Company. Don't have to go for it now, so I'll just play a land, attack for 2, and pass. And then if we find Scurry Oak with company, Evolution can find Rosie to finish out the combo for us. Sterling Grove, okay. That's fine. Weaver now makes two mana. And Enchantress's presence. So our opponent's tapped out. Can we assemble the combo? We sure can. Scurry Oak plus Rosie. Counter on Scurry Oak. And we're just going to be able to kill the opponent next turn already with an infinitely large Scurry Oak and infinite 1-1 Squirrel tokens. Although, of course, on Arena, we're probably going to be calling it a day at around 20 Squirrels. Or in this case, 10 would be enough, since Scurry Oak gets to hit them as well. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems great. Got both combo pieces and a turn 1 Elf to potentially set up the combo turn early. Opponent is blue-red, so they could definitely have some burn spells to interact. Don't have Skrelf to protect the team, so we're just gonna have to run out Scurry Oak here. At least Fauna Shaman gives us a bit of insurance. Could also play Fauna Shaman, play another Elf, and wait on Scurry Oak. Although it's not like I'm gonna have the mana afterwards to cast both Scurry Oak and Rosie. We would be one mana short if all the Elves survive. But it's possible our opponent fires off a Sweeper, and then I can still get there with Scurry Oak into Rosie. 
so it might be worth a shot. They could also have a counter spell here instead, which we want to bait out. Yep. Okay. Could this have countered Scurry Oak? Nope, mana value 2 or less. I guess red and green with mana value 6 or less, so yeah, I would have still countered Scurry Oak, not a rosy. So, I could just attack for 2, pass, and then try and set up the combo in one turn, which I don't hate, as opposed to running into more interaction. Could also pretend like we have a collected company, just pass a turn, but let's just hit for 2. This kind of shows a bit of weakness, so our opponent might be more comfortable tapping out. And then I can set up the combo opponent had an Archmage's Charm. So they could have countered our next play or stolen a one drop. So now we're at the mercy of the opponents tapping out, and they probably have quite a bit of interaction lined up. Okay, Soul Scar Mage we don't mind seeing. And an Eldritch Evolution gives us more redundancy. Alright, step one Scurry Oak. See if that resolves. If not, maybe Eldritch Evolution get another one. So now if I play Rosie, put counter on Scurry Oak, and they kill Scurry Oak in response, then it's not like getting another Scurry Oak would assemble the combo next turn, because then I'm missing the plus one counter. So that could be a little bit awkward, but it might still be worth going for here. Or we can pass, and then what happens? Put and maybe kill Scurry Oak, and then next turn I can Eldritch Evolution plus Rosie in one turn. But if her opponent has another Change the Equation or Archmage's Charm, those aren't good enough to defeat Rosie, so I feel like I should go for it. And yeah, opponent had the Abrade, unfortunately. So yeah, Rosie can put a counter on an Elf. But now we need both Eldritch Evolution as well as a way to enable the Evolve mechanic to get the first counter going. Skrelv is a bit late to the party. But uh, I guess we'll play Skrelv and then see what the opponent's response is. Don't feel the need to try and attack here into a prowess creature. Another Archmage's Charm to draw to this time. So, if they're willing to fire off their counter spell, they probably have most angles covered. And Flame, gonna take out both Rosie and Skrelv. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Can sacrifice a food token here, gain three. And hope to top deck another Scurry Oak, another Skrull for now. Yeah, going for Evolution I don't think makes sense until we actually have the combo lined up. Electromancer giving Instance and Sorceries a 1 mana discount. So another Wizard to go with Flame. Yeah, this seems like a tough matchup. Opponents has plenty of interaction. Removal for creatures, counter spells. And now Snapcaster get back Flame. Take out Skrelv and an Elf once again. There was a small window for the combo to work out if they didn't have an Abrade. But now it's going to be very difficult for the combo to work out, I think. Just going to pass it back. And then hope our opponent runs out of answers eventually. We are at 21, so we do have a little bit of time. But it's not like we're gonna get there the fair way. Another flame. Nice two for one. We're also running out of creatures to sacrifice to Eldritch Evolution. And a brawl, another wizard giving instance of sorceries a one mana discount. Alright, I think the game's probably over now. Another Soulscar Mage. Opponent likely playing Wizard's Lightning as well. And a Pilgrim's not gonna cut it. Could Eldritch Evolution just to get Rosie and get another Food Token, gain three. Uh, I guess we're not technically dead on board. Maybe have to block Snapcaster here. 
That way we're not dead to a 3 damage Wizard's Lightning. Another Eldritch Evolution doesn't quite do it. If we still had the uh, Pilgrim, then we would have had enough creatures left, but now we don't. So we'll see if our opponent had another counter spell lined up anyway. And they sure did. Alright, GG's. Opponent gets to draw and discard with Brawl. And that's going to be the end of it. So yeah, blue-red wizards with a new flame. Seems like a, a pretty nice build. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems good. I've got our Leyline, multiple mana creatures, and then Evolution and Company to try and find Scurry Oak and Rosie. So turn one Mystic. Opponents are red black, make that a Mardu. And a Fragmentize to destroy our Leyline of Abundance, now a Stitcher Supplier. So it looks like maybe a Graveyard Reanimator deck. And we found a Scurry Oak, which we should play. Then next turn Evolution, getting Rosy by sacking Mystic could assemble the combo. Our opponent does have three mana untapped, so they could have some instant speed interaction. And if I sack Mystic, then I won't necessarily have the mana to do much else on the following turns. So there is part of me that might want to just play a couple more Elves and then go for Company first, play it slow. But our opponent might just combo kill us in a turn or two, so let's see if we can do it ourselves. Do we get to make a squirrel? We do. So it looks like we're in the clear. Now if our opponent is a reanimator deck, they could still easily mill over a powerful creature that will deal with this board of infinite squirrels. A massacre worm would kill us on the spot, even though it's not played very often. But uh, thinking of Elishnorn giving our creatures minus two, minus two. They could reanimate a Saros Emissary, for instance, naming creature, and then with our opponent having protection from creatures, we can't deal them any damage, so that would save them. But I'll still make a healthy amount of squirrels here, so we can present lethal even without Scurry Oak, potentially. And then I'm wondering if I should even attack with Scurry Oak, because if our opponent jumps with Supplier, they get to mill three, potentially enable some graveyard synergies. So I might be better off not attacking and then setting up lethal with my squirrels instead. So let's go for about 30 squirrels. That way we can beat a bit of life gain as well. Okay, this seems good enough. And then I'll just pass and attack all out next turn. Another supplier is fine. Mills, couple of lands and an Avacyn. That one we can beat. Our opponent passes and yeah, we can attack all out and that should do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems keepable. We've got our Ley Line, two Mana Elves, and then between Evolution and Company we're likely to assemble the combo. Opponent with turn one Forests, that we don't mind seeing. Less likely to have removal here. And then we can cast a turn two Collected Company. That seems worth it. Can do it end of turn. And then Scurry Oak is what we most want to find. Marwyn, that's fine. So we're putting maybe an elf deck, or it could also be a combo deck built around Marwyn. And various untap effects. Okay, did not quite get lucky here. Just elves and Skrelv. But how much mana are we working with now? Three, four, five, six, seven. So that is still enough to cast Evolution and get Scurry Oak. And then Evolution gets Rosie. Want to get Scurry Oak first. And this is why Leyline of Abundance is so important in the deck, speeding things up. So we can afford to cast Company and uh, Eldritch Evolution to assemble the combo. Since those cards can be a little bit slow without the acceleration, and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has most of the pieces it needs to get there eventually. Might be a little bit slow if our opponent can interact with our Pilgrim especially. Might need another creature to discard to Fauna Shaman. And a Fatal Push takes care of Pilgrim. Okay, so next up is Fauna Shaman. 
Maze Mind Tome points towards a more controlling deck that wants to play the long game, which we're not necessarily equipped to handle. So go for Shaman. Don't want to be forced to evolution next turn, but we could sacrifice Shaman and get a Scurry Oak. And then Rosie would finish out the combo. All right, Thirst kills Shaman, so... Playing Rosie before Scurry Oak doesn't feel great. Now a Thoughtseize is likely to take Collected Company. So, hope to top deck Scurry Oak, I guess. Another evolution. So, could play Rosie, or I can pass, but then I don't really have a long-term solution. So, yeah, between a rock and a hard place. Poseidon on Tome is also an option before our opponent draws more answers. So maybe that's worth it here. Even though I ramp my opponent. If they scry, it gets shuffled away anyways, so that doesn't matter. And yeah, if we can find a one-mana elf, we can get Scurry Oak with Evolution. Or we can draw Scurry Oak. And then if they don't have any instant speed interaction, we may be able to get there eventually. Karn shuts off artifacts. And then the Minus can get more goodies. So not what we wanted to see. Poseidon ramped the opponent. So they won't quite be able to play Statue next turn. Still don't want to play Rosie. So we'll pass. Karn Minuses again. And gets a Meter Golem. Lots of expensive cards here, but opponent's unable to cast anything. But we're in the same boat with triple evolution now. Just waiting for an elf to sacrifice. Opponent's one mana away from a god pharaoh statue, which will make things even harder. And now invoke despair to draw three. So our opponent likely has more removal in hand now. Found our scurry oak. Chances of it surviving are pretty slim. But gotta give it a try. They can enable their own Fatal Push by activating Field of Ruin or minusing Karn. Stronghold close to making extra mana. If they tap out for Statue and we draw lands, we could still get there. But opponent's got the Hero's Downfall. That's tough. And a Flesh Gorger, we don't really mind. Karn pluses on Flesh Gorger, doesn't do anything. Okay, let's try again and get our Scurry Oak. Now with the land, our opponent can just cast Meteor Golem to destroy it. But we could beat Statue with an untapped land off the top. Problem is Karn can minus two again. And yeah, there's a Meteor Golem. So we'll take three from Flesh Gorger. Didn't think we'll be able to get there anymore. What else does Karn get? Platinum Angel. I could also potentially beat with Boseju, but we've already used it. So, we actually still have the potential of comboing. But at this point, I think our opponent's got us beat. Take six. If they tap out for Statue, we still have a chance. But our opponent had a kick, Blood Sheep's Thirst, all right. And another Tomb. Yeah, we got close to getting there, but uh, not quite. GG's. Play a Leyline, and our opponent can attack us down. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and our hands is missing some of the combo pieces, admittedly, but we have evolution to find one. Double elves with uh, a leyline of abundance could be fun, so I'll give it a try. If we're facing, let's say, a blue-red wizard's deck, then could play Skrelf first to kind of bait out her removal spell, and then play our elves, especially with double Skrelf in hand. But if our elf survives, then we could have a more explosive start. I'll still go with Skrelv. Turn 1 Swamp. And Inquisition. Alright, likely to take Evolution now. Found a Fauna Shaman. So at least our Elves are protected from spot removal now, thanks to Skrelv. 
and then Fauna Shaman can discard the Legendary to find either Rosie or Scurry Oak. Alright, so we can play Lenor Elves and Fauna Shaman. And then next turn, get one of the two combo pieces. Hope there's no board wipe. Fragment Reality, let's activate Skrelf. And there's Rosie, so let's see, we have four, five, six mana. So one mana short of uh, Fauna Shaman gets Scurry Oak and then play Rosie. But I guess we'll uh, start by getting Scurry Oak and playing it. And then next turn we could have infinite damage. With their opponent running Gigantha, they're slightly less likely to have some of the double red or double white sweepers. Our opponent cycles Triome, so they seem pretty dead, since next turn we can play Rosie and attack with an infinitely large Scurry Oak. Sweet, onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, sign me up, this hand looks good. Depending on the matchup, turn one, either Skrelv or Lenor Elves. Kumano points towards an aggressive, maybe burn strategy. So, yeah, maybe start with Skrelv, see if they want to take that out, and then next turn Lenor Elves. We're going to want to evolution for Scurry Oak first anyway, and then go for Rosie. And Skrelv can help protect our combo pieces from a removal spell. Another Kumano, that's fine. Kumano's also been nerfed, because now the creature half does not have haste anymore. Play with fire takes out, or 1-1. Alright, play Elves and a tapped Temple Garden. So if you're used to standard, the etching has haste, but now in Historic and Alchemy, it's just a 2-2. Stomp kills our Elf. And there's another one. Alright. So hopefully our opponent's out of removal, we can sack Pilgrim to Evolution to get Scurry Oak, and then play Rosie. And our opponent seems tapped out now, playing the Blade Reforged, finding Play with Fire. So if they don't have a land, we're in the clear. Awesome. So Pilgrim makes two mana thanks to Leyline, and then we first want to get Scurry Oak. And then play Rosie. So the one extra mana coming in handy here. Because Historic can be a pretty fast and relentless format. So one turn difference can be the difference between winning and losing. And I assume our opponent won't have an answer here to infinite squirrels when we're at 13. We'll make Scurry Oak large enough to potentially survive a sweeper. But yeah, opponent has seen enough. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our Infinite Squirrel deck in action, and while this may not be a tier 1 deck to play on the ranked ladder, since it's pretty easy to disrupt our combo between hand disruption and spot removal, it is still a pretty fast combo deck, so if you're up against other non-interactive decks that are just playing creatures or trying to assemble their own combo, we can often get there before they do, so that's definitely one of the strengths of this deck, but as I've said, pretty easy to disrupt, so I don't think it's necessarily gonna get there on the ranked ladder, at least not consistently, but uh, if you're just looking for a deck to complete your dailies, this can get your daily wins pretty quickly. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!